Hi guys, today we're going to talk about radicals. This is 15.1, an introduction to radicals. There are specific numbers on the number line that are called perfect squares. The first 15 perfect squares are as follows. These numbers here on the right are perfect squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. All of these are perfect squares, and the reason why we call them perfect squares is because we can get those numbers by multiplying another number times itself. For example, 9 is a perfect square because 3 squared or 3 times 3 equals 9. 81 is a perfect square because 9 times 9 is 81. So anytime we can get a number by multiplying another number times itself, it's a perfect square. Now we can undo squaring a number and the way that we can undo it is by taking the square root of the number. And the symbol for square root is this symbol right here. That's called the radical symbol. The number under the radical symbol is called the radicand. So if we were to look at this, the square root of one, this symbol is the square root symbol and the one would be our radicand. So to find the value of these radicals, what we would do is ask ourselves, what number can we multiply, <clears throat> excuse me, times itself to get that number? So for the square root of one, it would be one because one times one is one. The square root of 25 would be five because five times five is 25. What do you think the square root of 64 is? It would be eight. The square root of 289 is 17. What about the square root of zero? That would be zero because zero times zero is zero. The square root of 16 is four. The negative Square root of 16 would be negative 4 because the square root of 16 is 4 and then we just have to put that negative in front of it. What about the square root of negative 16? Okay, so remember the way that we determine what um, the square root of a number is, is we ask ourselves what can we multiply times itself to get that number? Well, if I were to multiply 4 times 4, I would get 16. And if I were to multiply negative 4 times negative 4, I would get 16. So there is no number that I can multiply times itself to get negative 16. Anytime we have, we're trying to take the square root or any even root of a negative number, we would say that there are no real roots or no real solutions. And the reason we say that is we don't just say that there's no solution because there is a solution in the complex number system. That's not something that we cover in Math 99. Um, once you get into college algebra, then we talk about the complex number system. But for now, anytime we try to take the square root of a negative number, we just say that there's no real roots. For number nine, we have the square root of a fraction, and we just take the square root of each part of the fraction. So basically, it's like we're doing this. Okay, so if I take the square root of each part, the square root of 81 is nine, and the square root of 100 is 10. So it would just be nine over 10. For number 10, the square root of um, 0.49 would just be 0.7. All right, there are also specific numbers on the number line that are called perfect cubes. The first 10 perfect cubes are as follows. 1, 8, 27, and so on. These numbers are called perfect cubes because we can multiply another number times itself three times to get that number. 
8 is a perfect cube because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Three, four, um, 343 is a perfect cube because 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. To undo cubing a number, the opposite operation is the cube root. The symbol for cube root looks like the symbol for square root, except for there's a little three in this pocket. That's called the index of the root. So if you don't see a number in the pocket, then it's understood to be a square root. But whatever number you see in this pocket, that means the, the number under the radical symbol, you would have to get it by multiplying another number times itself that many times. So for a cube root, we're trying to see what number we can multiply times itself three times to get that number. The cube root of 27 would be three because three times three is nine times three is 27. For number two, the cube root of 64 is four. The cube root of one would just be one. What about the cube root of eight? That would be two. The negative cube root of eight would be negative two because when we take the cube root of eight, that's two and we put the negative in front. What about the cube root of negative eight? It would not be no real roots because this is a cube root. If I multiply negative two times itself three times, negative two times negative two is positive four, and then positive four times negative two would give me negative eight. So the cube root of negative eight is negative two. When we're trying to take the an odd root of a negative number, we can do that. We just can't take an even root of a negative number. All right, for number seven, the cube root of one over 343. So again, just like we did with the fraction for our square roots, we're just taking the cube root of each part. The cube root of one would be one. The cube root of 343 is seven. For the cube root of negative 125 over 729, like I said, we can take the negative cube root of a number. It's just going to be negative. And the cube root of 125 is 5. The cube root of 729 is 9. So negative 5 over 9 would be the answer to that. The cube root of 0, of course, is 0. And the cube root of negative 0 0.512 or 512 thousandths would be negative 0 0.8. So we've talked about square roots and cube roots. We can have other roots. If the square root means to find a number times itself and a cube root means to find a number times itself three times, then you can find the value for any other root following that pattern. So let's find the value of each of the following roots. The fourth root of 16 means what number can we multiply times itself four times to get 16? Well, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So two, would be the fourth root of 16. And like I said, whatever is in that little pocket, that's how you know how many times you need to multiply another number times itself to get that number. The fourth root of 81 would be three. 
3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. All right, the fifth root of 1 would just be 1. Any root of 1 is going to be 1. What about the fifth root of negative 1? Since 5 is an odd number, we can do the negative. And so this would just be negative 1. But if I were going to try to take the sixth root of negative 1, that would be no real root, no real roots. All right, the sixth root of 64 is what number can we multiply times itself six times to get 64? So we know it's got to be a really small number. So if I think about what can I multiply six times or times itself six times to get that number, I'm going to start with two. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64. So that would be two. The negative sixth root of 64 would be negative two. What about the sixth root of negative, six, negative 64? We can't do that because that's an even root. We can't take the even root of a negative number, so no real roots. Sorry about that. All right, for number eight, um, we're just going to take the cube root of each part. The cube root, I'm saying cube root, sorry, the fourth root. The fourth root of one is one. And then the fourth root of 625 would be five. Everything that we have looked at so far were numbers. What makes a variable a perfect square? All right, so if a number is a perfect square, if we can multiply another number times itself to get that number, the same thing's gonna apply to a variable. So if I were to ask myself, what can I multiply times itself to get x squared? It would be x times x. x times x is x squared. So the square root of x squared would be x. For the square root of x to the fourth, again we're saying what can we multiply times itself to get x to the fourth? Well, if I multiply x squared times x squared, that would give me x to the fourth. So the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. What about the square root of x to the sixth? x to the third times x to the third is x to the sixth. Sixth, that's kind of hard to say. Okay, so um, if, if you'll notice, there's a little pattern going on here. Um, remember I said that if it's the square root, you don't see a number in this little pocket. If it's any other index, you're going to see it in the pocket. But square root is, is, if we had a number there, it would be a 2 because we're trying to see what we can multiply times itself. So that's two, two things to get that number. So to take the square root of a variable with an exponent, really what we're doing is we're dividing by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the square root of x to the 8th, what do you think that would be? x to the 4th, because 8 divided by 2 is 4. All right, for number 5, again, we're just, whatever the root is, that's what we're going to divide by. So x to the 10th, if I divide 10 by 2, I get 5. And then y to the 12th, the square root of y to the 12th would be y to the 
sixth. Now, we only do that to exponents, not to the big numbers. To the big numbers, we have to take the square root of that number. So for the big number part of this next example, um, we're going to take the square root, the square root of 100, what can we multiply times itself to get 100, would be 10. But for the variable, we're going to divide it by 2. So that would be y to the 20 divided by 2 would be 10. All right, what makes a variable a perfect cube? So just like with numbers, it has to be able to be um, multiplied times itself three times to get that number. So if I say what can I um, multiply times itself three times to get x cubed, it would be x times x times x. That would be x cubed. So the cube root of x cubed would be x. But we can do the same thing that we did in the square roots, we can just divide the exponent by the index. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 would be 2. Okay, so let's see if that worked. If I did x squared times x squared times x squared, 2 plus 2 plus 2 would be x to the 6th. So it works. So the cube root of x to the 9th 9 divided by 3 is 3. All right, for the cube root of x to the 12th, 12 divided by 3 is 4. The cube root of x to the 15th, y to the 18th would be x to the 5th, y to the sixth. For number 12, um, again, we don't do the same thing to the big numbers. First of all, can we take the cube root of negative 27? Yes, because it's a cube root. It's an odd root. We can do the odd roots of negative numbers. Now, what big number, what number can we multiply times itself three times to get negative 27? it would be negative three. And then for the exponent, we just divide it by the three. So 21 divided by three would be seven.